He is said to be a man driven by ambition, cunning, and ruthlessness. A figure whose story has fascinated generations. He stands as one of the 20th century's most influential and feared criminals, a name synonymous with the emergence of organized crime in the US and the rise of the mafia. A gangster through and through, this episode unravels the fascinating life of Charles Lucky Luciano and explores how this Italian immigrant with modest beginnings ventured into the world of racketeering, political manipulation, and murder. We'll reveal how Luciano's criminal actions were not just daring, but extremely ruthless, leaving an impact on the American criminal underworld that is still felt today. Stay tuned for today's bite-sized true crime recap. Lucky Luciano, from hustler to head honcho. Charles Luciano, originally named Salvatore Luciana, was born on November 24, 1897 in Lercara, Fridi, Sicily, and the third of five children born to Antonio Luciana and Rosalie Caporelli Luciana. The family immigrated to the U.S. in 1906. Young Luciano faced a lot of difficulties in his early school years given his inability to speak English. However, despite this, his knack for gaining power was soon revealed as he set about conning his fellow classmates into paying him for protection from bullies. If they refused, he became the bully himself. By age 10, he was shoplifting and mugging victims, and by age 14, he had dropped out of school to work as a clerk at a hat company. In 1916, he experienced his first significant encounter with the law, serving a six-month sentence at a reformatory for selling heroin. Soon after, he began forming connections with local gang members, including future allies Meyer Lansky and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. By 1920, Luciano had connected with Giuseppe, Joe the Boss, Masseria's criminal enterprise, and he quickly rose through the ranks to become Masseria's chief lieutenant by 1925. His duties included the overseeing of various rackets, including prostitution, bootlegging, and narcotics distribution. It's not clear why Luciano earned the nickname Lucky. However, most people attribute it to an incident in 1929 when he miraculously survived a brutal assault. He was kidnapped by a group of men who subjected him to a vicious beating, stabbing and leaving him for dead on a beach in Staten Island with his throat slit. Luckily for him, a vigilant police officer found him and rushed him to the hospital. The motive behind the attack remained murky, with speculation that it might have been ordered by the police or by influential crime boss Masseria, who was embroiled in a turf war with rival boss Salvatore Maranzano. Luciano had been associated with Masseria for a long time, but he later threw his support behind Maranzano. In April 1931, Luciano, in a covert agreement with Maranzano, took on the task of arranging the death of Masseria. In exchange for his loyalty and services, Luciano was promised control over Masseria's criminal operations and the prestige of being Maranzano's right-hand man. This secret deal resulted in Masseria's violent demise at the hands of four of Luciano's loyal associates, Vito Genovese, Albert Anastasia, Joe Adonis, and Bugsy Siegel. Soon after, Luciano orchestrated the murder of Maranzano on September 10, 1931, using four Jewish gunmen loaned by Meyer Lansky, and took over the crime family that would eventually become known as the Genovese family. Luciano was a skilled organizer, and he continued Maranzano's Committee of Five Families, which controlled various criminal activities along the East Coast for decades. However, instead of adopting the title Boss of Bosses like Maranzano, Luciano chose to call himself the chairman of the board. With his main rivals eliminated, Luciano turned his attention to improving the way criminal organizations operated. He set about establishing a nationwide network for organized crime, aiming to prevent conflicts, manage disputes, and create guidelines for various criminal enterprises. Alongside the leaders of the five families, he also brought in crime figures from all over the country, including Chicago's Al Capone. This new governing body was named the Commission, which elevated organized crime to new heights. During the 1930s, Luciano lived a lavish lifestyle at New York's Waldorf Towers, part of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He dressed impeccably, enjoyed chauffeur-driven cars, and appeared as a wealthy businessman. It could be said that he was the original Dapper Don before John Gotti. However, his prosperity was short-lived. As in 1935, 
Thomas E. Dewey was appointed as a special prosecutor to investigate organized crime, with Luciano firmly in his sights. In 1936, Dewey launched a series of raids on brothels throughout the city. These operations resulted in the arrest of over 100 individuals and unearthed crucial information about Luciano's illicit activities. On June 6th of that year, Luciano and eight members of his vice racket faced trial, having been indicted in May, and Luciano's downfall came swiftly when he was found guilty on charges of extortion and prostitution in June. He received a harsh sentence of 30 to 50 years in prison and was sent to the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York, which some called Siberia due to its remote location near the Canadian border. Luciano attempted to appeal his case, but the court upheld his conviction. The case against Luciano lacked direct evidence, as prostitution was considered a secondary business for his crime family. However, during the trial, Luciano's fortunes took a disastrous turn when he was subjected to a damaging cross-examination by Dewey. Dewey raised questions about how Luciano managed to maintain a luxurious lifestyle on a reported income of $22,500, when his actual earnings were estimated to be around $10 million. This line of questioning significantly contributed to Luciano's downfall and his subsequent imprisonment. Isn't it time the boss was convicted? After his conviction and imprisonment, you might think Luciano's story was over. However, World War II started and things quickly changed. The government needed help from the mob to safeguard New York docks from strikes and sabotage, so they turned to Luciano for assistance. Luciano agreed to help hoping that his cooperation would lead to a reduction in his sentence, a possibility as Thomas Dewey, his former prosecutor, had become New York's governor and had the power to grant him some kind of mercy. The part Luciano played in World War II was by no means insignificant and often overlooked by mafia buffs. He collaborated with U.S. naval intelligence, helping safeguard the New York docks against potential Nazi sabotage following the blowing up of the liner Normandy, all while he was still imprisoned. There are even hints that Luciano may have been a valuable asset during the Cold War, aiding the CIA in preventing a communist takeover of Sicily in 1947. After the war, Dewey did indeed reduce the severity of Luciano's punishment on the condition that Luciano would leave the United States. Luciano agreed and was deported to Italy. However, he didn't stay put for long and eventually ended up in Havana, Cuba, where he mingled with the likes of Frank Sinatra. The U.S. government later pressured the Cuban government to send Luciano back to Italy, and so in 1947, he returned to Italy, where he remained under close surveillance. His movements were restricted to Naples, and there were reports that he may have continued involvement in narcotics trafficking and illegal immigration to the U.S. In 1929, Charles Luciano crossed paths with Broadway dancer Gay Orlova. They remained a couple until Luciano's arrest, but they never tied the knot. Nearly two decades later, in 1948, Luciano met a Milanese ballerina named Egia Lassoni. While there is no confirmation of their marriage, they chose to live together. Throughout their relationship, Luciano maintained affairs with other women. It's also worth noting that Luciano never fathered any children. Regarding fatherhood, he stated, I didn't want no son of mine to go through life as the son of Luciano the gangster. There's one thing I still hate Dewey for, making me a gangster in the eyes of the world. Despite his legal troubles and living under the watchful eye of Italian law enforcement, Luciano frequently met with American tourists and sailors and openly expressed his deep affection for the United States. On January 26, 1962, he suffered a fatal heart attack at Naples Airport. At the time of his passing, Luciano was meeting with an American film producer to discuss the possibility of making a movie about his extraordinary, perilous life. Finally, after years of exile and legal entanglements, he was allowed to return for burial to the country he cherished so dearly, the United States. Organized crime constitutes nothing less than a guerrilla war against society. The life of Charles Lucky Luciano was one defined by violence, murder, and excess. He left a trail of havoc and suffering in his wake, affecting countless families and individuals. Yet his story remains one of intrigue, conspiracy, and drama, continuing to captivate and fascinate many. The tale of Luciano serves as a reminder of the immense power and influence that effective leadership combined with ruthlessness can wield. It shows how such qualities can lead to the creation of criminal empires, often hidden from plain sight but undeniably present. 
waiting for the forces of law and order to challenge them and ultimately bring them down.